buckle in. We're going to talk about saltwater ick and hyposalinity today. Hi guys and welcome to Heidi's Fish Tank. Today I wanted to talk about marine ick and one of my favorite ways to treat it. So this is going to be a long video and full disclosure, I'm not like a scientist. It's just based on my research and what I personally like to do. So um, there are many, many ways, many, many illnesses that saltwater fish can get. And saltwater fish in particular are a little bit more prone to illness because oftentimes they are wild caught. They go through so much before they end up on your doorstep um, or in your tank that it's really, really important to make sure that you are getting healthy fish and that you are treating them properly. And there's a ton of different illnesses, but today our main focus is going to be marine ick. Now, if you've never seen marine ick before, basically what it is is it is, um, it will look like someone has sprinkled salt all over your fish. Um, and it's not necessarily deadly. If you have like a fish that's having other problems, they might have problems with ick, but long-term typically fish do okay um, as long as you have healthy fish and they're eating pretty well. The problem, however, with ick is its life cycle. So ick is a parasite and the way that it works is it will show up on the fish and you'll see it on the fish um, and it looks like these little sprinkles of salt. And then the life cycle works that it falls off of the fish into the substrate where it goes and it's there for like a few weeks, it reproduces, bursts, and then more parasites come out. That's the gist of it. Um, and as those more parasites come out, they look for more hosts. Now in the ocean, this isn't that big of a deal because in the ocean, um, you have tons and tons of hosts to deal with. But in a closed system, that parasite will keep reproducing and keep reinfecting the same fish over and over again. And eventually it can get your fish very, very sick uh, because you're just kind of like exponentially growing the parasite each time. So it's really important that you are quarantining and treating for ick particularly if you have a reef tank. And the reason for that is if you have coral or inverts in your tank, there's really no good reef safe medication that you can give the fish. Your only option if you have coral or inverts is to separate the fish from the coral. So usually that's taking all of the fish out of your tank, all of them, not just the one that's sick, but all of them out because any of them could have a dormant parasite take all of them out and put them in a separate quarantine system, which I know sounds like it really, really, really sucks. And then treating that separate, leaving your main display tank empty for weeks on end. Uh, you can still have your inverts and your coral in there, but leaving it fishless for four weeks at the very minimum, but I would do at least six weeks to be honest, um, so that any parasites that have fallen off the fish then when they burst, they starve because they have no host. That's why it's really important to take all of the fish out if you're going to do this because um, they will continue to find hosts. So I've seen um, people do just like one the one sick fish, but if you have your healthy fish in there and the parasites have fallen into the substrate already, they'll just reinfect the fish and you'll just forever be dealing with ick. Um, so the best way to do it is prevention and that's to one, get healthy fish, and two, quarantine them. Um, there are different quarantine methods, and my favorite is to treat ahead of time. So how do you get rid of ick? There's three ways. Number one, and probably the most cop, uh, most popular, is copper. There's a product called Cupramine, which I will link down below, and we can talk about more in a different video. Um, it's very, very popular, and it's just you just add the medication to the tank. But you don't want to add Cupramine to a display tank that has coral in it, or if you eventually plan on having coral or inverts, because the copper seeps into the rock, it seeps into the substrate and everything, and can continue to leach out, which is really, really bad for coral and, um, really bad for coral and inverts. So copper, ideally you want to be using it in a quarantine system. Um, another method is something called the tank transfer method, and this involves having two tanks and switching the fish back and forth every couple of days, three days tops, um, between one tank to another quarantine tank, so that ideally as the parasites fall off, they stay in the tank where you just took the fish out of, and um, 
and then don't reinfect. So what you do is you have them in tank one for a few days, move them over to tank two, and then completely clean out tank one and let that sit for a few days before you refill it back up and switch the fish over again. For obvious reasons, the tank transfer method can be pretty labor intensive, but it does have its place. The third and my favorite option is something called hyposalinity. Uh, so basically the premise of hyposalinity is that fish uh, can osmoregulate down to a pretty low salt level or salinity um, and be okay for a period of time, but uh, the parasites cannot live in that low salinity environment. So typically, your typical uh, saltwater fish tank is um, a salinity of 1.020 to 1.026, and it's typically a little higher in a reef tank with inverts and that kind of thing. Now it's really important to know that um, coral and inverts, again, cannot handle hyposalinity. So this is again going to be a method that you can only use in a fish only system or you can only use in a quarantine system. Now let me tell you all the reasons why I prefer hyposalinity. Copper has its place and tank transfer has its place. There are some fish that are really sensitive to hyposalinity, there are some fish that are really sensitive to copper and for those reasons you might have to pick your quarantine system dependently. But um, I like hyposalinity. So basically what you're doing is you're lowering your salt level from 1.025 or 20 or whatever it is down to 1.009 to 1.010. And essentially in freshwater we would call this a brackish tank. Um, it's like where the ocean would meet freshwater. And most fish can do pretty well. Typically, saltwater fish do okay in lower salinities. It's easier for them to transition to a lower salinity than it is for them to transition to a higher salinity. And like I said, lowering the salinity allows the ick parasites to fall off and has nowhere for them to reproduce. But it is important that you are doing a couple things really, really well. As you may know, when salt water evaporates, the salt maintains in the tank. So the water evaporates but the salt doesn't. So you want to ideally, in an ideal world, you would want to have an auto top off system where you're putting fresh water back into the tank um, in order to make sure that your salinity is staying at that 1.009 to 1.010 level the entire time you're doing this treatment method. Um, that would be ideal but I know that most people, if you're going to be doing this in a quarantine system, probably don't have an auto top off, which is fine, but that means that you need to be watching the tank really, really carefully and making sure that you are topping off the water. So along with that, you need to make sure that you are testing that salinity. And ideally, you would want to be testing it every day in the quarantine system. This is not a system that you would want to be using like in a hydrometer with. I like hydrometers. I think hydrometers have their place. The Instant Ocean one is pretty good for a fish only with live rock system. I'll link it down below, but my preference would be to use a refractometer. And there's no reason not to use a refractometer. You can get them pretty cheap on Amazon. I'll link the one that I have down below as well. Um, but I think it was like $15 to $20. It wasn't very much, but they're much more accurate and you need to make sure that it's well calibrated. So calibrate your refractometer and make sure that it is correctly reflecting the salinity of the tank. Um, and then just test it. People make hyposalinity sound like it's going to be a really, really labor intensive process, but really it's just testing salinity every day. And in my opinion, that's less labor intensive than like tracking ammonia with your, um, tank transfer method and all that stuff. I think that hyposalinity is probably the easiest on the fish, but it is important to do your research and make sure that the fish that you are using, um, using a hyposalinity with can do okay in this low salinity environment. Now it's really important that as that you do this slowly uh, when you bring it back up because like I said fish can usually drop salinity really easily um, but raising salinity is harder on their osmoregulation system so um, you want to make sure that you are raising the salinity like I, I would do like one point per day when you're at the end of the whole treatment. I again would have the treatment method last for about four to six weeks um, from the time that you see the last spot of ick fall off the fish. 
So have that be like four weeks or so, four to six weeks, and then slowly raise, raise your salinity levels until you're at um, like one point per day. So depending on the size of your tank will be how much you need to add. And so what you do to lower the salinity is just like take a certain amount of water out and replace it with fresh water. Um, and then when you do it backwards, you do the same thing. So you take a little bit of water out and then you replace it with water that has a higher salinity to it. Um, and what that amount is going to be is going to depend on the size of the tank that you are doing it in. So hyposalinity is definitely my favorite method um, because most of these other methods are going to end up costing you money. Um, it costs money for cupramine, you know? It costs a lot of money for salt if you're doing tank transfer method with all that water that you're having to switch back and forth and all those water changes. Whereas hyposalinity actually saves you money because you're using less salt when you do it. Apart from, of course, the cost of the refractometer, but in the grand scheme of things, the refractometer is probably a good thing to have anyways and it doesn't cost much. It's just really not very expensive. And I have to say, I have seen this work. I've seen this work very well. Briefly, I wanna to mention too, because there's a lot of myths out there, garlic does not heal ick. It just doesn't. In fact, I've read some indications that garlic might actually even be bad for fish. I do think garlic has its purposes, um, but the reason why people say garlic cures ick is because it can, when you're sick, make you not want to eat. And garlic can persuade a sick fish to eat. And the premise is your fish is sick, so you give them food with garlic in it and they'll eat more and that will improve their immune system, which then in turn will help them heal. I think that there's some reason to that, but that's like, I wouldn't do that by itself. It's like going out and taking vitamin C when you have an illness vitamin C or, you know, emergency or whatever, yeah, it's a, it's a good thing, but if you need medication, you should probably take your medication too. So, um, just, I like garlic. I use garlic. I use it when I have fish that are really picky to eat. I use the Sea Chem Garlic Guard, which I'll link down below too. If you're having trouble getting fish to eat, garlic is fine, but, um, don't go out buying garlic because people say that it will heal your fish and you won't have to take them out of a reef tank. Um, at the end of the day, if you want to completely eradicate, eradicate your tank of ick, you have to treat the fish. That's just part of the deal. Um, and if you're running officially with live rock system, you can just do hyposalinity directly in the tank. That's what I do in my tank and that's what I do in my mom's tank because we don't have inverts or coral in there, um, which is a great method. So one of the things that I'm thinking for my tank is I'm planning on running hyposalinity until I'm done stocking all of my fish and then I'll slowly raise my salinity back up before stocking coral. But it's just one method. I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments. Have you ever dealt with ick before? And what did you use to stop it? It is important to know that freshwater ick and marine ick are completely different things. We could do a separate video about freshwater ick at a separate time, but I hope that this video was helpful. Um, and if it was, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you hit that bell notification and then you click on my video when you get the notification, that makes YouTube really happy. And then they like me and they promote my videos. So. I'd love it if you did that. And then for you, you'd never miss a video. Anyways, thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you soon. Bye guys.